Welcome to the next uh, episode in our series. Um, today I wanted to talk about orphan meshing. This is pretty common within aerospace, uh, mostly because the uh, programs that aerospace works on uh, have been around for a really freaking long time. So there's a really good chance that all that you are going to be given in your model is mesh, right? Because a a femdeck, you know, a BDF file doesn't actually store geometry. It just stores nodes and elements and loads and outer conditions. It doesn't have this idea of, well, here's a parameterized surface for you. Uh, you know, if it did, you know, our jobs would be a lot easier, but it doesn't. So um, this is the generic model that I've been working on this whole time. I know I owe you some recordings and I know you I'd owe the model. I'm working on it. Um, I do have a day job, by the way. Uh, but what I want to actually do first is I'm going to delete all of the geometry. So this I just this happens to have geometry. I'm just going to pretend like uh, it it doesn't. So I'm going to take all the solids, uh, select them all, Control A, and then hit the delete key on my my thingy. Um, I will have this option to delete associated surfaces. Of course, I would like to delete them as well and keep the mesh. So now. Um, Kind of looking at this, it says I have lines and surfaces. So let me change surfaces, all, control A, delete these surfaces. I don't want to delete the elements. This is just kind of a silly way that I have to do this, but I guess there's a, probably a better way. I could have just shown all the geometry. Um, show all the lines, control A, a bunch of lines in here, delete. And apparently there's a bunch of points. So I can see this, this is kind of a nice little geometry thing. Maybe I could have just gone in. Oh, deleted this whole. Oh, that would have been easier. Gosh, I'm so dumb. Okay, apparently you can just delete the whole geometry. Blah blah. So I have no geometry in my model now. This is only you know nodes and elements. This is as if you'd imported a BDF file. Um, okay. So now the question is, what can I what can I do right to this mesh? Um, a lot of times, you know, things change. So maybe there's we filled in some holes. We've cut new holes out. Especially if you're looking at legacy. Uh, you know, aircraft, uh, military aircraft, right? You've you've put on a bunch of new stuff. You've taken off a bunch of old stuff. There's holes. You've got, you know, you, there's just, it's, it's dirty, right? So, um, and usually you don't have CAD for it. Or if you do, it takes a long time to get that and it just bogs down your process. So what can we do to some of this, uh, 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 this, uh, this mesh in order to actually get more close to what we actually have, okay? So uh, let's talk about some of the things that we can do. Uh, the first thing that we can actually do is this cut hole tool, which is actually under geometry. And this topic is a little harder to, to deal with because um, we do have what we call FE geometry now. And when you do file import, say a bulk data file or a solver deck, there is going to be a little flag that says, I can automatically create what we call FE geometry as, upon import. Okay, so even though there's no geometry in your model, if you had that flag, you will see that there's geometry, and then you can treat this, you know, you know all of the geometry tools are at your disposal. But uh, this cut hole will work independent of that. So let's um, come to uh, maybe this um, uh, frame, say, uh, which elements would I like to kind of use as a, a target? So I can do um, elements by face by holding Alt, or I can uh, right click, select by face. This little option here, and now as I hover over this, I'll say, okay. Well, on these elements, I actually want to trim out a circle, a curved hole, a slot even. I uh, can do all of these options. I'm going to do a slot because I think that's the cooler one. So I select the, the seed point for the slot, and you're going to kind of see I get these options for dimensions. Okay, so my length, uh, let's make this like 120. You know, radius, all of that's fine. I can position this if I need to, right? So it's kind of a little um, kind of line to the part. So maybe I want to rotate it in this axis yeah, a few degrees. Okay, so it's more more even. Okay. I have those options. And then I'm going to say add slot. Okay, I can go and add more things, right? A, a circle, another hole, more elements, you know, select more elements, whatever I need to do. But this is the slot that I want to kind of cut into here. So I'm going to say cut. Uh, failed imprint elements. Uh, hello. 
Try this one more time. Elements. Cut holes. Why did we fail to imprint here? Okay, let's try this one more time. Cut. These are the elements that I'd like to have selected. Here is going to be my slot. Alt. Alt. Elements by face. Slot. Maybe we'll just make a circle. If your slot's having a hard time today. Uh, let's see. Radius 50. I want to leave enough edge distance so it doesn't get, you know, cut off. There will be issues if you do try to do this too close to an edge. It might not uh, fully trim. Okay. That there. Kidoki. And a circle. Hit cut. Okay, not sure why slot didn't work. Slot should have worked. Um, but you can kind of see. So even though there's no geometry in this, I'm still able to add something like a feature of a circle. And there are some options in here. Oh, this could have been one of the issues with the uh, parameters and criteria file. We haven't talked about these, but these hold a lot of mesh-based type of features where if you wanted washers around this, you can put washers around this. If you wanted uh, all sorts of different things can be done. But um, Okay, so this is one option. This is kind of trim cut holes. It can do slots, it can do uh, square holes, all sorts of different things. You just select the elements that you want to be affected by this, um, and we will go ahead and trim that out. Okay. Uh, so that's a pretty common one. The, the next most common tool that we see on kind of bulk, you know, bulk data files that we can change is the ability to fill a hole, right? So normally we're trimming or filling, uh, and under the fill, under this elements ribbon, we have the option of a hole and gap fill. Uh, this tool will do one of two things. Um, so it will do uh, essentially a hole fill in which you can select a bunch of parts or components and search for a hole. Um, so you can always search, but I usually like to do uh, this idea of just selecting the edges of a hole to fill. Um, so I'll select the little yellow box here. This actually does push you back to a panel. so. You know, that's not the best thing in the world, but um, let's say I'd like to fill, you know, all the holes on this rib or a uh, little stiffener here. I'll select all of those edges. You see the edges will get selected. Okay. Then I have options for how this is going to get filled. Uh, I know that this is going to be bad, but I will fill this currently. And what this does by default is it actually just does kind of like an STL fill, right? So it's just going to, you know, literally close the gap with no mind for element quality. So this could be good for some of the electromagnetics people when you just need to fill holes and gaps so you get a, an OML of your part. Um, but it's not great for us structural people, so I'm going to hit reject. And we do have an option for remesh, so I would encourage you to use that. Um, and this is where all of the new elements will go. So either the current component, you'll probably want it in the adjacent component. So what it is touching? Hit fill. And you'll see that the mesh obviously is much better now. Okay. Uh, if you want to go back and remesh this, we can do that, but that's going to be my next topic. Okay. Uh, so obviously I can do hole and gap fill, um, do different things. Patch is a little less circular, um, so I believe patch will do a, a pretty good job on this middle opening. Um, so if I went here, I think I can do this middle, the middle. Proceed. Uh, this one also will be curved because it's on a curved surface, but I'll hit fill so you can see. Um, it does kind of see that there's a little, a little bump over here. Um, you can hit the curve fill and it will curve. Okay. <clears throat> so that's kind of like a patch filling hole tool, right? So you can kind of get back to a normal distribution. Um, the refine tool obviously doesn't need any type of, um, uh, that's way too fine, by the way. doesn't need any type of, uh, that is the mesh size, uh, geometry behind it. Okay, so it can just make a little patch or refinement. You can select that. Uh, fuse will also do a similar thing. The idea behind a fuse is when your gaps are not circular. So this is, uh, if I go to my um, 
kind of example, it would be the physical gap that exists between like a door and the fuselage, but you know, you kind of just want to consider that close, even though it's modeled. Um, this would be able to close gaps, essentially stitches to two meshes together. Um, is what this will do. Yep. Uh, the uh, uh, I believe we've talked about morphing. You can obviously morph. You don't need any geometry for this. Um, but the final thing that we can do is we can actually remesh a mesh. Okay. This isn't usually the most common thing because no, normally, you know, element IDs and node IDs are pretty sacred within what we do. Um, so this isn't the most common option. Uh, but let's say I filled in all of these holes and now I'd, I'd like just kind of a much more smooth mesh, right? Um, so, and maybe even a finer mesh. Maybe we're doing a more detailed analysis on this part. So um, maybe that is, is the case here. So I will grab um, all of these elements. As well as these two, not sure why they didn't get selected. And I can put in maybe a finer element size, maybe an element size of five. So this was an element size of five, by the way. So it's going to be much finer. Okay. Uh, it's going to mesh, remesh all these shells independent. There's no geometry associated with this. So we'll just hit mesh. Okay. And you'll see that we get a you know, much more, uh, a much more organized type of mesh, I suppose, is probably the best way. I can't change any of these, even though it does go into a density. Um, none of the elements that I selected had a free edge in which to uh, change the density on because they're connected to the mesh still. So if I would, if I wanted to do this, um, I would have had to select this face as well as this face and hit mesh. And now I can say change the density here. So I was a little locked into what I could actually, the remeshing extent that I could go to um, because I didn't actually have a free edge in which to change the density of. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Um, so as far as orphan meshing goes, uh, that's pretty much usually what we do. Hole fill, create a hole in a mesh, uh, and then remesh a mesh. Um, uh, so as far as kind of orphan meshing, um, those are some of the things that we can do. Add that to the morphine that we talked about earlier. Um, we can change the shapes of these parts. Oh, the last one I guess we can do, I don't know if I've ever shown this tool, but this works on mesh, is this idea of replicate. Okay. Um, so replicate is interesting. I'll try to find a good example here. Uh, let's say I wanted to essentially take this rib feature, even though it's not super complicated. Um, well, I'll do two things. I'll take this rib feature, and I just want to replicate this feature, you know, two or three times along the length of this beam. Okay, uh, so I will once again uh, do elements by face or edge. So grab those elements, um, and I will have the ability to uh, move them. Okay, so I can say, let's get this organized. Perfect. Uh, I want to move my move tool. So remember, I can go shift. I can snap this to the edge and I can s hold shift and snap Y down the length of that element. So I've kind of reposition this. Uh, so in the Y direction, I can take this and I can, you know, replicate this, but I can also replicate this um, two, three, X number of times as well. Okay. So let me kind of take this back here. That looks good. And what this is actually going to do, it's kind of a combination of a few tools. It's obviously copy and pasting. It's some equivalency and stitching. I'm going to go ahead and hit replicate. And it's going to take this feature, and it's going to sew it into the mesh here. And it will do any type of remeshing that it needs. So this is great if you have a complicated feature. Obviously, this is not the most complicated feature in the world. But um, <clears throat> what it does, and... Uh, I'll do kind of the same thing over here. This one will kind of be silly, but uh, let's do it just because, you know, what else are we doing today? Um, I can take this mesh feature. <laughs> that's, that's pretty. Maybe we should have put a washer around this. Either way. Uh, and I will move this this hole as well to another location. So once again, let me uh, move my move tool, mostly just to get it in line with an axis uh, down the length of this. 
Okay. So now I don't want to replicate it three times, by the way. I just want to replicate it once. I want to actually move this circle over here somewhere onto this face as well. Okie dokie. I'm going to hit replicate. This could look weird, but um, essentially we can take this feature and put it into a, another spot. So a little kind of silly, but if you spent a lot of time making a really nice circle with lots of really nice washers, you can take that um, and replicate it elsewhere. And again, this this is no geometry. This is all just kind of mesh stuff. Mesh, 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 mesh. Um, all right. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show with orphan meshing, um, those kind of tools. Uh, again, some of these tools you need to, to use a little more cleverly than than. Uh, what you might have used in the past, but if you're pretty, if you're a clever person, um, I think you could find some really, really cool efficiencies with some of these tools. And with that, uh, I hope everyone's doing well. Feel free to reach out to to me or Altair support if you need anything. Um, and we will talk next time.